The roles that women were expected to play in ancient Greece were quite constrained and well-defined. Women were often expected to marry, have children, and be responsible for the upkeep of the home. In Greek society, unmarried women had very few options and very little provisions were made for them. Some of them were held as slaves or worked as servants in famous houses, while others were involved in the sex trade and entertained men from a variety of social classes. Only a few of them assumed the positions of religious figures inside their own cults. Poets like Sappho of Lesbos, philosophers like Arete of Cyrene, political leaders like Gorgo of Sparta and Aspasia of Athens, and physicians like Agnodice of Athens were able to overcome the limits that Greek society imposed on most women. On the other hand, one thing was certain. With very few exceptions, women were not allowed to vote, own land, or inherit land. They had a poorer education in comparison to men, and they were mostly dependent on men for their material well-being. Researching Greek Women it is rather ironic that the majority of the material we know on the life of ancient Greek women comes from the perspectives and writings of men. This presents a challenge to our ability to understand ancient Greek women. Even the female characters that appear in Greek mythology and legend were created by authors like Homer and Euripides. When tackling the subject matter, there are a few key differences that should be emphasized. The first thing that needs to be mentioned is the fact that the treatment of women in various Greek city-states was rather distinct from one another. Athens, whose women did not enjoy as many advantages as their sisters in Sparta did, is the source of a significant number of the period's sources. Class was another factor that had a role in the lives of women. Women from higher social classes had access to more material privileges, but they were also more restricted and guarded than those from lower social groups. Despite all of this, there is still a great deal that we are able to extract from sources from the time period that provide us with an insight into the multifaceted but ultimately constrained life that ancient Greek women led. Early Years and Education In ancient Greek civilization, the birth of a baby girl was rarely celebrated in public, much like it was in many other cultures that were predominantly agricultural and male-dominated. Female infants also had a much increased risk of having their mothers give up on them shortly after delivery, in contrast to the situation with male kids. Every youngster in ancient Greece was required to attend school. The curriculum for the male students included of subjects such as mathematics, poetry, literature, writing, music, and athletics. Girls received an education comparable to that of the boys. Nevertheless, there was a stronger emphasis placed on activities such as music, dancing and gymnastics, as well as more broadly, the qualities required to be excellent mothers and spouses. Developing female intellect was not a priority. Again, things were a little bit different at Sparta. There, women were honored for their role as the mothers of soldiers and were given the opportunity to receive a more advanced education as a result. In addition, not everyone believed that women should be prevented from receiving the same degree of education as males. For example, the school of thought known as Stoicism maintained that women in ancient Greece were capable of engaging in philosophy on a same level as men. It is a frequent misconception that pederasty may only take place between adult males and teenage males. However, pederasty was an essential component of a girl's upbringing. This was a sexual relationship between an adult and a teenager, in which the adult served as a mentor to the younger partner, while also engaging in sexual activity with them. Marriage Young girls typically got married when they were 13 or 14, at which point they were referred to as a core, which is Japanese for maiden. In most cultures, the father or another male relative was the one to arrange marriages, choose the spouse, and take a dowry from the bride's family. Love played a relatively minor role in the decision to wed. Since the husband was looking for eros, or the love of desire, somewhere else, the best that could be hoped for was philia, which is a usually affectionate attitude of friendship. Philia is the Greek word for love. In Greek society, women who were not married did not have any rights or roles of their own. After the birth of the first child, a wife's position would change from that of a core to that of a gyne, woman. Women, in contrast to their husbands, were expected to maintain fidelity to their partners. 
If a man found out that his wife was having an affair with another man, he was given permission to kill the other man without fear of incurring criminal charges for his actions. There are three potential causes for the dissolution of a marriage. The first and most common occurrence was being turned down by the husband. It was not essential to provide a reason. All that was required was the return of the dowry. The second event was the departure of the wife from the family home. This was extremely uncommon because it diminished the standing of a woman in society. The third scenario was one in which the parent requested the return of their daughter on the grounds that an alternative proposal had been made with a more substantial dowry. This was only doable if the woman in question did not have any children. After the death of a woman's spouse, she was expected to wed the male relative who was physically nearest to her in order to save the family estate. Life at Home Women in ancient Greece spent the majority of their lives within the home. The polis, state, was run by the men, while the oikos, home, was the domain of the women. Women were expected to take care of the household, raise their children and bear children, often with the assistance of slaves if their husbands were affluent enough to afford them. Even though they were not permitted to enter the homes of male friends or participate in most public religious rites or festivals, Athenian women were permitted to visit the homes of other female acquaintances and spend a significant amount of time working with wool or weaving inside the city. It was discouraged to have contact with males who were not related. In Athens, wealthy women were required to have male relatives accompany them at all times when they were outside, and in some cases, they were not even permitted to leave the house at all. In contrast, Spartan women rarely married before the age of 20, and when they did, they were considered to be essential figureheads in the process of correctly raising future Spartan warriors. Women at Sparta, Delphi, Thessaly, and Megara could also possess land, and because their husbands were typically away on military excursions, women frequently held sovereignty over their own dwellings. In a similar vein, because poor women in general had fewer slaves and more work to do, it was necessary for them to leave the house in order to do things like go to the market or get water. They occasionally found employment in stores, bakeries, or even in the homes of more prosperous families in the capacity of servants. Work and public life. Despite the fact that the vast majority of women were prohibited from participating in public assemblies, working, voting, or holding public office, religion offered individuals from upper classes a realistic career route. It was customary for women to hold the position of high priestess of the Athena Polias, the state's highest religious position. In addition to holding roles in Athenian religious cults, such as those dedicated to the worship of Demeter, Aphrodite, and Dionysus, individuals might also hold a variety of other positions that granted them public power, and in some cases, financial compensation and property. On the other hand, it was common practice for these roles to demand that women either be virgins or be past the menopause. Gorgo, a Spartan queen who lived in the 5th century BC, was a well-known character in Sparta. Gorgo, who was the only child of Cleomenes I, king of Sparta, received an education that included learning about literature, culture, wrestling, and many forms of fighting. She was known as a woman of tremendous intelligence who provided advice to both her father and husband on topics pertaining to the military. She is also frequently attributed with being one of the earliest cryptanalysts in the history of the world. Sex Workers There is a significant amount of information that has been preserved regarding the ancient Greek women who worked as sex workers. The most frequent form of these women was referred to as a porn, which is another word for a prostitute working in a brothel. The second type of these women was known as a hetaira, which is a higher-class prostitute. Hetera women frequently formed long-term relationships with men who were already married, in addition to receiving an education in music and culture. This group of women also provided entertainment for the males during the Symposium, which was a secret drinking party only to male guests. This duty of providing company was somewhat analogous to that of a geisha in the culture of Japan. A range of experiences. When it comes to the lives of women in ancient Greece, there was no one experience that was universal to all of them. Nevertheless, despite the fact that we have a more restricted understanding of their lives than we do of the lives of men, 
It is abundantly obvious that ancient Greece would not have flourished as one of the leading intellectual, creative, and culturally lively civilizations in antiquity without the contributions of women, which are sometimes disregarded. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.